This is the Earth. Everything you have ever known is located somewhere on this blue planet. It's true that if you zoomed out enough, the Earth would appear as just a pale blue dot caught in a sunbeam. However, what would happen if we zoomed in really, really, really far? You might find that the universe can get much smaller than you ever thought possible. Let's start off with the largest mountain on Earth, Mount Everest. The peak of Everest is an astounding 8.8 .8 kilometers tall. That's about the same height that most commercial aircraft will fly at. And even though Mount Everest seems like it is quite tall, in comparison to the size of the Earth, it's nothing. The Earth has a diameter of 12,742 kilometers, meaning that if the Earth were the size of a basketball, Mount Everest would be one of the tiny bumps of the leather that is on the basketball. But let's dive a little deeper into the oceans. The blue whale is the largest known creature on the planet. It can weigh up to 173 tons and can reach up to 30 meters long. Despite how absolutely massive this creature may seem, it is absolutely dwarfed by Mount Everest, as it would take 293 of the largest blue whales on the planet just to reach the same length as Mount Everest. Down to the next order of magnitude, we have us humans. The average height of a human worldwide is about 5 feet 4 inches, or about 1.62 meters. However, in some countries like Iceland, the average height is closer to 5 feet 9 inches, while in other countries like Indonesia, it is closer to just 5 feet. Nonetheless, it would take about 18 and a half average sized humans stacked on top of one another from end to end just to reach the same length as a blue whale. Now, depending on where these humans live and what time of year it is, there is a good chance that they might have mosquitoes buzzing around them. Now, as we all know, mosquitoes are extremely annoying to the human race because the vast majority of them don't actually do much harm, but they are very, very, very irritating. One of the reasons why they are so irritating is because we have trouble seeing them. Mosquitoes are about two centimeters in length or about three quarters of an inch long. So when a two centimeter long mosquito wants to take a bite out of a 160 centimeter tall human, the human might not even notice its existence until it is too late. But one pest that is even harder to detect is the flea. Fleas are an entire order of magnitude smaller than mosquitoes, which makes them much harder to detect. The average size of a flea is only about one millimeter in length, or about 20 times smaller than a mosquito. Now one random thing about fleas that I had to include in this video is that even though fleas are only one millimeter in length, they can actually jump about 18 centimeters up in the air. That means that they can jump 180 times their own height. That would be like the average human being able to jump 291 meters straight up into the air, nearly enough to reach the top of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. But I digress. Tiny fleas usually try to find their way onto a human skin where it may bump into something that's even tinier. The width of a human hair is about 100 micrometers in diameter, or about 10 times smaller than a flea. Now, the width of a human hair is a rough estimate of the limit of what an average person can see without needing the assistance of a microscope. So things beyond this point may begin to get a little bit weird for you. But trust me, we have only scratched the surface of what is to come. Human hair is attached to your body through three layers of skin. The top layer of skin is called the epidermis, and 90% of it is made up of 30 micrometer long cells called keratinocytes. Keratinocytes are actually one of the larger cell types in the human body, yet it takes roughly 35 billion of these cells to create all of the skin on your body. And that number only represents a small fraction of the total number of cells in the human body. You have roughly 30 trillion cells in your body, but to see most of them, we will have to shrink down to an area that's four and a half times smaller than a skin cell. At a width of seven micrometers, we will find a red blood cell. There are an astounding 20 trillion of these red blood cells in your body, and that's probably a good thing because these cells are the main reason that you are alive today. Now, red blood cells are one of the smallest types of cells in your body, but they are definitely not the smallest. The smallest cells in your body are actually not human cells at all. They are actually bacteria. As we said earlier, there are 30 trillion human cells in your body, but there are actually about 40 trillion bacteria cells in your body as well. This means that most of what makes you, you, is not human at all. 
it is actually bacteria. One of the reasons why bacteria is able to populate your body is because of how small bacterial cells are. An average bacterial cell is seven times smaller than an average red blood cell, making the length of one bacteria about one micrometer long. There are substantially more bacterial organisms in the world than there are eukaryotic living creatures. Meaning that most living things live on a scale that is so small that you will never be able to see it with your own eyes. Now the point that we have just reached is what we call the length of life. So nothing past this point will be a living organism. However, I would like to share with you this astounding thought. Every person you have ever met, every dog that you have ever seen, every fly that you have ever swatted, every animal that has ever lived, every fish that has ever swam, and every plant that has ever grown has happened on a scale that is millions of times larger than where we are right now in this video. We are now going to venture into the nano world. Here is some perspective of the scale that we are going to deal with now. One nanometer is equal to one billionth of a meter, meaning that it would take one million nanometers to equal the same size as a flea that we mentioned earlier, and it would take 1.6 billion nanometers to equal the height of an average human being. Now that you have some perspective on what we are dealing with here, let's jump into the light. Visible light, that is. Visible light has a wavelength range of about 400 to 700 nanometers, meaning that all of the light that has produced everything you have ever seen has occurred in this range. Down a little bit further to the 10 to 100 nanometer range, we get viruses. Now, viruses are not living things. They are pretty much just some genetic information that is coded in a layer of protein and fat and viruses remain inactive until they find a living host. And when it does find a host, the virus then replicates inside the living cell to give you an illness like a cold, flu, or in rare cases, HIV. Now, these viruses are extremely small, but something that is shockingly even smaller are modern transistors. If you don't know what a transistor is, they are tiny electronic amplifiers that are responsible for all of our modern computers, smartphones, and electronics. They used to be about 10,000 nanometers long, but companies like Intel, Apple, and IBM have been able to shrink a single transistor down to something that is just seven nanometers long. Or in other words, a modern transistor is only slightly longer than the diameter of a DNA double helix. Think about that for a second. The most important invention of the 20th century, the item that is responsible for all of the computation capabilities on this planet Earth, is something that is just 7 nanometers long. As we move past the transistor and the DNA double helix, we officially cross into the pico and atomic world. The main unit of measurement will be a picometer, where one picometer equals one trillionth of a meter. And the first thing that we see when we cross into this new world is water. But probably not the kind of water that you are thinking of. At 280 picometers, we see a single molecule of water, just two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. And as we take a closer look at this water molecule, at a length of about 150 picometers, we can see the individual bonds that hold the water molecule together. But diving even deeper to a length of 50 picometers, we can actually see a single hydrogen atom with its nucleus at its center surrounded by its electrons. As we go deeper into the atom, we now must use a new unit of measurement called a femtometer, which is one quadrillionth of a meter. At 15 femtometers, we begin to see the nucleus of an atom which is composed of protons and neutrons. And as we travel 10 times deeper to a length of one and a half femtometers, we can begin to see individual protons that make up the nucleus of the atom. This is the end of what we call the atomic world, but yet we have so much further to go. The next level is properly named the subatomic world. At a length of one atometer, which is one quintillionth of a meter, we begin to see quarks. Quarks are thought to be the fundamental particles that compose all of the protons and neutrons of all of the matter in the universe. Or at least they were thought to be the fundamental particles. But as you may have noticed in this video, is that everything in the universe is made up of something even smaller. 
At one zeptometer, which is 1,000 times smaller than an atometer, and one sextillion times smaller than a meter, we run into prions, which are particles that compose all of the quarks in the universe. But yes, we can go even smaller. At one yoctometer, we reach the purpose of this video. At this scale, we are able to find the particles that we know of as neutrinos. Now here is the mind-blowing part. This is the point where the difference between this particle and you is the same size difference between you and the entire observable universe. Think about that. But what if I were to tell you that things can get even smaller than this? Billions of times smaller. There is a unit of measurement called the Planck length, which is roughly 100 billion times smaller than a yoctometer. At this scale, we begin to see the fabric of space-time itself. It is theorized that quantum foam exists here where you are able to see the individual fluctuations of space-time. It is also theorized that this is where string theory comes from. That is the theory where energetic strings are able to create all of the fundamental particles that we have in this universe. To this date, this is the smallest thing that we think can exist. However, I would like to leave you with this one thought. Just 2,000 years ago, humans thought that the smallest things in existence were called animacules. After these animacules were studied a little bit more, they were called something else. Amoeba. Then, in the 1600s, we discovered something that's even smaller. Individual cells. After their discovery, it was said that cells were the smallest thing in the universe. A little over a hundred years later, we discovered that cells were actually made of smaller things called organelles. And about a hundred years after that, we discovered that these organelles were made of things like molecules and atoms. It was then that we said that the atoms were the smallest possible thing in the universe. So as you can see, the definition of what we think is the smallest thing possible keeps changing. So let's bring that idea back to string theory and the fabric of space. Who's to say that in another hundred years, or maybe a thousand years, that we won't discover that even space-time itself or strings are composed of something that's even smaller that we have not discovered yet? And if we do discover that, then what are those things composed of? Everything is made of something. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below to see more awesome videos like this. And make sure to check out the video How the Universe is Way Bigger Than You Think. It is a great video that is not done by us, but we will leave a link below in the description. And make sure to leave a comment down below of what you thought of this video. Any kind of feedback does help us. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.